Uh, in a previous set of lessons, we talked about how you can take a plane or a, a footage file and turn it on its like 90 degrees on its side and then use a camera and create a more interesting um, look to that graphic or footage or photography. Uh, we did it with a grid. So I wanna show you um, something even more advanced now to take it even a step further. Um, this is a technique that I picked up from Andrew Kramer. We all know who Andrew Kramer is. Uh, years ago, he created this uh, very simple technique to create a, uh, a grid, like a kind of like a sci-fi, um, oh, it's not like a perfect grid. It's just something, it's very uh, organic. Uh, it's pretty cool. So we're gonna call this uh, advanced grid. And it's a technique I picked up from him and I'm just doing my own spin on it. So this first part will be uh, based on what I learned from him, which is, we're just gonna call this grid. And what he taught was that you take um, and regenerate advanced lightning. That's what it was. Um, and you turn advanced lightning into a grid. So you're gonna turn the opacity, so there's no glow, so we're down to zero. Uh, we're gonna change the type lightning type to bouncy. So there we go, and we're gonna go into, core settings are fine. We're gonna crank the turbulence all the way up to 10. And then we're gonna go into expert settings and we're gonna take the complexity down to two. And we're gonna bring it down here. We're going to just, it takes some, um, some trial and error to get it to work right. But that's essentially it right there. You're gonna also play around with the decay a little bit. Um, and it just depends on what you wanna do for decay, um, you know, how much you wanna see of it. Um, after that, that's what I learned from him. So what I'm doing next now is I'm going to duplicate the advanced lightning. I'm gonna say composite on original so that we can put another set of this on top. And then I just play around with the origin. So I'm gonna try and just kind of, you know, fill up this uh, solid with these with this effect. So duplicate it again. And again, I'm just playing around with the origin here. Um, I want something up in here. So maybe in here, so funny how it reacts. And maybe we'll do it one more time. And there we go. And now let's take it over here. Maybe something like that. It might not be enough, but we'll we'll see. So now we've got our our basic grid set up. I'm gonna make this layer 3D. I'm gonna rotate it negative 90 on its x-axis. So now we can't see it. It is there. There it is. I'm gonna add a camera, layer new camera. Uh, we'll go 35 millimeter uh, depth of field, sure and we're going to hit R for rotation, and we're just gonna rotate it um, on the X axis, and I'm gonna hit C for my camera rotate tool, and just something like this, something like that. Now, I want this grid to extend all the way back here. I could, duplicate this layer and drag it back uh, on the y-axis and just keep going back, back, back in space. Uh, but a cheat, a, a easy way to get around this is to use the Reptile, which I had pulled up there. Um, it's under Stylize. So if we go over here to Effect, make sure layers have selected, Effect, Stylize, Reptile, and now I can't find it. Where are you at? Reptile, CC Reptile. There we go. So we're going to expand up and we're gonna crank this way up. Just keep going, maybe somewhere way up in here or something like that. Um, we're also going to change this from repeat to unfold. Yeah, looks pretty cool. Um, so we'll start there. Okay. 
And let's move in a little bit closer here on our grid. So I want to create a loop. So to do that, I need to make sure I don't see up in here. So maybe what we'll do is just go a little bit higher up in here. Yeah, that's too much. I don't want to go too high up in there. But maybe something like that. And then we're going to hit AA. Make sure our depth of field is on. It is on. And we're going to crank up that aperture again. And I want to bring this focus distance up in here. So we'll just click and drag and just bring that focus distance forward. And I'm just watching what it does visually. You know, oh, that's pretty cool right there. That's that's nice. I like that. Uh, maybe, no, we don't, I think the aperture is pretty good right there. Uh, sometimes I'll play around with the amount of blur and crank it up, but typically 100, which is where it's at right there, is, is just great. Next thing I'm going to do is instead of animating the camera, I'm actually going to animate. Well, actually, we are going to animate the camera. Let's do that. Let's do that. So let's just do a simple. How about a simple Z rotation? And we'll just kind of sway back and forth. So we'll do a negative 15. And we'll set this to an easy ease. And we'll go halfway here, which is three seconds. And we'll do positive. 15 and at the very end we'll go back to negative 15 and maybe I'll just drag that right there so it's just a simple swaying motion that we can just uh, loop and it'll just you know go back and forth so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna animate the grid and like I said I could animate the camera moving over this but instead let's just do it something different this time let's just animate the grid coming towards us so I'll hit P for position and I found that the values of about 180, set a keyframe here, and I'll go to the end of my timeline, to a negative uh, 1960, creates a, a fairly decent loop, at least on the tests it did. You never know when I rebuild these things, if it's going to look the same. It looks pretty close. So let's go ahead and just do a preview of this. Okay, so there it's playing back and it's looking pretty good. I like what I see here. Um, I do see a little bit of a pop back here for the loop and that's because we go back to the beginning and there's a little bit more uh, repetile going on here. That of course is gone at the end because we're moving, it's moving past us. Uh, so that's okay. I'm also using a kind of a crappy um, iris shape. So if we were to change this to something like hexagon again, it's going to look a little bit nicer there. It's going to take longer to render. Um, but let's see if I can just get rid of this background here. Maybe negative 18. And then push in just a hair more. Oh, maybe make it negative 19. That might do it. That might be too much. Yeah, I can still see that background kind of pop off a little bit there. Uh, but this will do it for now. The last thing I want to show you now is because, um, you know, working in, in 2.5D, doing simple things like repeating and changing the position just slightly makes a huge difference. So let's just do that. Let's just duplicate this layer. Let's bring it to the bottom. Let's turn off our position. And let's just change it. I, I deleted the keyframes there. Let's just change it to, I don't know, 340. That takes it above. So we'll go, let's just go 600. So we added 60 to this. We dropped it below. Um, we're going to duplicate it again. And we're going to drop this one uh, to 660 because I'm OCD. And I like to have things even. And that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to parent both of these layers to my layer that has the position keyframes, which you can see here. Because remember, we deleted the position keyframes here. It's just 
less keyframes to deal with if I wanna move things around, which I do because I'm gonna move them around just slightly on the Y axis and just to give it a little bit of variance. So it's not the same shape repeating down, 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 which you could do that. Um, and it would probably look really nice. And then this one, I'm just gonna maybe drag forward just a hair, something like that. Or maybe I'll maybe I'll do the opposite. Maybe I'll go backwards again. I liked, I liked that look. Something like that. And let's just take a preview of this. So looking at this preview, it's it's pretty close. It's still a little bit too repetitive for me. Um, so I just want to offset it just a hair more. Yeah, that, that works for that one. Um, and I think that's all I need to do. Maybe turn down that depth of field just a, a touch. And play that back. And there we go. So there's just a little bit of a hiccup there at the end. You could probably add like a um, like a solid type of mat over that feathered and it would uh, hide that. But I really like this kind of, you know, it's a futuristic grid. It's very organic, but it's just this simple movement of adding a camera uh, with some shallow depth of field and some simple movements What is what really makes it shine. Um, and you know me, I can't ever let this stuff die so I have to fix that end so um, we'll call this cover up and let's do a simple like feather on this and something like you know pretty high feather Um, I should say, if you want to stick around, you'll see me <laughs> try and fix this. If not, I get it. What I'm going to do is try and cover this up. Probably need to reduce the feather. So I just want it to be completely dark up in here. And then home brings me to the beginning of my timeline. End is the end. There we go. Perfect. And there we go. Perfect loop. I'm happy with that. Thanks for watching.